did you know that there is an international day for rural women? And I think it's very important to have, you know, when we look at the UN, you have the UN Declaration of Human Rights and then the UN Declaration of Human Rights for Indigenous Persons, because over time we found that so many movements that we have still seclude a good number of people. So today is the International Day of Rural and Urban Women, and we are looking at exactly what makes them unique. Off the top of your head, what would you say? The first thing I would think of would be most likely geographical locations and geographical mm. placement and accessibility to several things that would you know, make mm. them be able to compete worldwide. Mm. So, for example, you think of the women in the villages, a lot of them are not exposed to as much information as the ones in the cities have. They're not exposed to as many amenities as the ones in the cities I have. And it just reminds me of growing up, you know, and going to, I schooled for a bit, for a time in my mm. life, I schooled in a place in Delta State called Ole, mm. and I saw the w women there. It's, it's more or less a rural setting. Mm. And I saw the women there, and I saw how hardworking and how driven and how dedicated that these women are. We can't talk about agriculture mm. without talking about the influence and the impact of these women. We find that lots of things that you think of and think, oh, it's a man's work. No, it's not really a man's work. So when you think of a butcher, you think of a man. Mm. But in Oli, I saw women who were selling meat, cutting it with all their might. Mm -hmm. I saw women carrying firewood and going to the farm. Mm -hmm. I saw women riding, you know, the motorcycles carrying passengers. So I saw women define the norms of what they say were the jobs of men. Mm. And I even saw a lot of the men just chilling mm. whilst the women did all the work. So yes, mm. kudos to the seemingly rural women who mm. don't have as much access to the amenities that we have, but yet make the best of the little that they have. Absolutely, absolutely. I think it's so important to recognize that particular strength that we do see in rural women because a lot of those things humble me because I look at the situations that rural women often find themselves in, doing things like Olive just stated, butchering meat, carrying a load of water, etc. And I'm like, Leila, do you have the physical strength to do this? And clearly I do not. So it's one of those things that I really respect and I'm always like kudos to rural women and urban women for being able to do that. However, if I was to say that there was one thing that I find unique about rural women, I would definitely say it's the fact that rural women do not conform to societal standards. And I had this conversation on radio about two weeks ago with a girl called Jess Chibweze who said that when she goes back to her village, she said, Leila, you see women that are not wearing bras and they do not feel uncomfortable. She said, you come back to the city and you will not feel that comfortable stepping out without a bra. Now, back in the day before bras were invented, women did not wear bras. However your breasts were, or however you were going to carry them. And it's something that we still see in a lot of rural women. A lot of studies are coming out today to show that wearing bras are not good for you. Over the years, they do a lot of things to your back and your chest that aren't necessarily good for you. And it's very interesting to see. But rural women have held on to a lot of things in tradition that we have lost based on new societal norms. And I well, think it's quite important. I think I would like to deviate slightly mm. from that. On the contrary, I think that mm. we find that a lot of them are not as exposed to information mm. that they should be exposed to in the sense mm. that we have them, first of all, being, um, we mm. still have things like village community meetings. Mm. We still have so um, situations where they say it's men's town hall meeting, the mm. men should speak. The women are not allowed to speak mm. because in our tradition and in our society, mm. the man is the head. You know, mm. so we still have such lots of those things in the rural communities. That's what makes more, it a double-edged sword. You know? So they basically, the, the urban women mm. are the ones who are being empowered to speak more and mm -hmm. fight for women's rights mm -hmm. and women's equality. But mm. things like widows' disinheritance. You know, it's unfortunate to think that in mm. 2018, we still have people that when their husbands die, they make the woman shave her head. Mm. They make the woman wear black for one year. They make the woman probably stay in the same room with her husband's mm. coffin for about three days before the man is finally mm. buried. All these things happen more in the rural areas mm. before they, they would more happen there than happen in the, in the urban areas. Mm. Also with things like um, FGM, female genital mm. mutilation, we see more of that in these rural areas mm. because the truth is some of them don't even know. Mm -hmm. So I'm particularly um, passionate about us advocating, mm. doing a lot of advocacy for rural women, mm. teaching them, going in there, educating them. During the Ebola saga, the Ebola episode, a lot of the people mm. that, had the, that were like, at the short end of the Ebola drama, where those mm. in the rural areas, because they were the ones that had, hey, you salt to mm. have a bath, and then they would pack large bags mm. of salt into water and have a bath. So I would say that 
they are the ones that are more trapped into societal expectations than the urban women. That is facts. Nobody is contesting that. That is completely facts because they don't have access to information. I'm talking about new traditions and things that have been brought into society that were not there from the very beginning that they have not conformed to because they don't have to. We may be living in the most digital age in urban parts of any country, but in rural parts of that exact same country, you can have the most minimized digital progression that you're going to see. So there's a lot of things that we are seeing in society today that rural women are not exposed to, and they do have benefits. So whereas I can walk out of my house and I may not feel uncomfortable um, if I'm not wearing a bra, it's not necessarily going to be the same for a good number of rural women who don't see it as a norm in their particular society to do that. And these are things that have been put on us in society that may not necessarily be the solutions to the problems that we may see My sister, in society. So, our problem is bigger than brow. Oh, no. <laughs> now, I would hmm. say that I, there's something mentioned about, you know, digital developments. And I hmm. must say that I really envy the fact that sometimes, hmm. you know, the whole digital technology, hmm. it can be a blessing, but it can also be a curse. Mm. I admire the fact that they have the freedom not to be bound by the struggles that come with digital mm. life and it has its advantages but it does have quite a number of disadvantages. That's why I, said I it's like a the fact that they sword. have <laughs> they can you know face their agriculture mm. and have fresh food every day and we are just eating mainly processed food. So there are advantages, mm. there are disadvantages for the rural women, the urban women. At the end of the day we should just look forward to making life better, improving the quality of life, access to information and access to basic amenities for the rural women as well as for the urban women. To enjoy more of this, our Ubunke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.